Hey Dean. All right, so I want to show you how to go through the process to assemble these knobs, and I also want to show you what I created. So I got two sets of knobs um, in the green color and the blue color. Uh, the reason I did that, and this is one of the things I got to show you, or try to show you on video, you'll see it when you get them. Um, 3D printing, everything's built in layers, okay? Um, and so when you create a domed surface, like here's your original that's very smooth and shiny. I can't really pre reproduce that in 3D printing. You'll see there's kind of this stair-stepped look to it because it's building it up in layers. Um, so, you know, that's one of the limitations of 3D printing. Uh, when I did the green ones, I had programmed it to do these really, really thin layers like here, and it made a mistake and it made larger steps in in the green and then I ran out of green material so I wasn't happy with the quality of that so I I had the blue so I made three more sets in blue with that finer quality uh, now that these models are made I can actually provide you the models there is um, a website that if you really want to get them really smooth like this there's an outsource um, an outsource you know 3d printing company that you know you can order load up the file and order whatever parts you want and I can help direct you how to do that if you want uh, if you really if it's that important to get all this completely smooth a commercial 3d printer is probably gonna be the only way to do it anyway I want to show you how to assemble these um, so I did make it out of two parts and this this ring at the bottom you'll notice has four of these little See that little, I don't know what to call it really, um, little protrusion that's kind of um, a little bump there on that surface inside of there. And that co corresponds to, you'll see a similar little bump out in the stainless steel. There's four of them on there. So I measured and got this part. When, when you do this, when you fit it in there, I can't hold the camera in this, so bear with me. Um, you know, if you if you rotate it, it'll get to the point where it actually snaps in there. Let me, I just had it and now I lost it. Um, there you go. So when it keys in, it, it won't rotate and it's really locked in. So these things are designed to press fit together. You wanna push it into the bottom of this and you need to put it on something that supports it. Now I'm using a cardboard box because I'm actually in a hotel room. I'm in Philly right now. Uh, at a conference um, but anyway I want you need to use something hard not a cardboard box I'd suggest a small block of wood or something or um, you know something hard because you're gonna compress these parts and I'm not gonna permanently do this because I don't know if you want the green I'm gonna, sorry hold on pause this no, I guess I can't um, I wanna um, okay there I got it you want to really, you know, key it in so it's locked, and then you're going to press fit in. You're going to take whatever knob you want and put it on there. And they're designed so that the the inside of this and the outside of this one are, uh, it's going to be an interference fit. And it's going to seem hard to do at first. You're going to put this over it and literally just with all your body weight, lean down on that sucker really hard on the plastic, and it will... Um, it will lock together, it will snap together. Um, and if you have a hard time doing it, you could use a rubber mallet. I don't know, it's probably not something you have sort of readily available. They're pretty cheap if you need to get one at Home Depot, like, you know, six or seven bucks. But a rubber mallet would be sensitive enough to not hurt the top of the knob and would force it all together. Because you really want to press it together and get a really good tight fit so it won't rotate on this metal piece and um, it'd be permanently connected I mean you could get it apart with a screwdriver from the underside if you really need to you could pry it apart um, but um, that way you can choose whether you want to use the green or you want to use the blue and um, you'll have all three of your things having the same um, having the same uh, color on all three all right but again press fitting that together you could also use a soft piece of material like you could put 
I don't know, a cloth napkin or some sort of, even a piece of double folded up piece of cardboard on this and tap it with a regular hammer. Uh, that might work where you won't uh, damage the surface of this. Uh, you might want to take the color you think you don't want to use and test that one first and then you can break it apart from the underside with a screwdriver if you want and then do it with the colors that you you want anyway um and then you know once you press them together they'll be good to go and um you know oh and the other thing i want to mention this plastic that i used is a plant-based plastic both the blue and the green so it's safe for food use now i know it's only a cookie jar but Anyway, um, it just happens to be a plant-based plastic, so um, no petroleum in that, so uh, no harm to the food, uh, if it were to contact any. So anyway, um, I'm going to send you this in a message, and I'm going to also confirm the address to ship it to, and I'm going to ship it out today, and uh, I hope it works well for you. And if not, we can print more, and or either I can print more, or, you know, like I said, there's a service that can print really perfect ones if you want uh, that has better equipment than I do. Anyway, that's it, Dean. Talk to you soon. Bye.